All right, everyone, we are back with a Black Cat gameplay video. Now, you have no doubt probably seen the DPS videos using her against Rolk at this point, um, since my video is coming out a little bit after the new embargo date. So, this video will not focus on her damage potential or her bleed potential. It will more so focus on the utility and the abilities of her special two um, while gently highlighting some of the other utility or aspects of her kit in special one special three and her sig ability so what we're going to do first is we're going to take a look at two very key pieces of her kit that might manipulate the way you decide to play her all right, so the first part of her kit that's pretty important is this calling card. So there's a black passive buff that you'll see in the fight that jumps back and forth, and it jumps back and forth based on what you do with Black Cat. So if you ever intercept or if you hit the opponent when they're recovering or standing up from a heavier special attack, she steals the card. So it's put on her. And then if you hit the opponent with a heavy attack and the card's on you, it places the card on them for every hit of a heavy attack. So the reason that detail every hit is there is the first hit of the heavy, if you use it to retaliate, let's say a heavy attack, the same way you kind of use Tigra to retaliate heavy attacks, the first hit puts the card on you because it fulfills that second line there where she's stealing the card. And then the rest of her heavy attack, if it lands, places the card back on the opponent because uh, it fulfills the third line there. And you want the card jumping back and forth because of the fourth line there where every time the calling card changes hands, it adds a combo to her combo meter, which matters when we talk about it later. And then it gives you a cruelty passive that lasts for 13 seconds. And then the bonuses for those gains are multiplied every time the call the card has changed hands so there's a number attached to that passive buff um, that's your multiplier and you basically want to build that up so that you can build up this combo meter that you have um, adjusted combo meter that you're eventually going to have and increase the number of cruelty passives that you have all right, so while you're trying to get this card to bounce back and forth and build a multiplier, uh, there's something going on called the Heist, and it's a passive white buff that's on Black Cat, and it has her mask in it, and it has a number associated with it since it's a countdown timer of 45 seconds. But when the Heist ends, depending on where that calling card is, you get one of two benefits. You either get a Vicious Passive, which increases damage over time potency um, for 15 seconds, or you place a sabotage on the opponent if the card is on them, which reduces their defensive ability accuracy by 40%. And every time a defensive ability fails to trigger because of that sabotage, there is a uh, hit of direct damage dealt to the opponent. And this direct damage can be modified. So it's not just off her base uh, attack. So with the card in mind and the two benefits of the heist ending, I'm, I have two clips that I'm going to show you. One that leads us into one of, or leads us into the vicious passive, and then the other that leads us into the sabotage debuff. Um, and in the videos, you're going to get a feel of how to maybe make the card go back and forth, and maybe depending on what you're fighting, why you would pick one of these benefits over the other. Um, keep in mind that reading some of how the card goes back and forth may suggest that you need to play her like Tigra, um, but you actually do not to get some duration of benefit of either of these buffs or debuffs. All right, so pay close attention to the calling card. It's gonna jump back and forth, and it's because of the actions that I'm doing with Black Cat based on what Rolk is doing. Um, I will let you know that in this clip, I did not force intercepts, so I could play a bit more aggressive to get the card to go back and forth. Um, I did, however, throw heavy in heavy attacks in retaliation to Rolk's special attacks or heavy attacks, 
just because I felt comfortable doing so with his animations. Um, and this is just to help that multiplier get a bit higher before we decide to drop special two. And special two will end the heist early and it'll also take the card and place it opposite of where it's at before ending the heist early. So it's on Rolk right now. If I were to special two, which I'm going to here pretty soon, puts the card on me and then ends the heist. And I get the benefit of it being on me, which is this vicious passive. Now, I'm strictly going to fight here without retaliating intentionally with heavy attacks or without block baiting heavy attacks, this, that, and the other. I'm just going to strictly fight. Um, nothing fancy. And you can take a look at the amount of bleeds that we're placing and um, how long this vicious passive is actually lasting, which it looks like sometimes it's getting paused and we'll get into that. But from here, once you've got this benefit, you can actually just fight. You don't have to be fancy. This is a big health pool. You can just go ahead and take advantage of the fact that we're focused on making this opponent bleed out while building a good bit of crit damage. And then that's the end of the vicious passive. Now, we're gonna take a look at the same scenario where we get the card going back and forth, but instead the card was on us when we threw the special attack. And since special two puts the card on the opposite, um, option and then ends the heist, we have the sabotage debuff. Now you're taking a look at not just the bleed, but this additional red number that shows up with every hit here. And that's because we're causing an, a defensive ability accuracy to fail, or a defensive ability to fail with the accuracy reduction. Now the sabotage debuff is only 40%, so there's still, if you don't know about the other ability, there's still 60% chance an ability can happen. However, which we'll get into a little bit later or next, um, there's something that covers that other 60%. But for now, I'm not being fancy just like I wasn't with the Vicious Passive. I'm just strictly attacking him and we took off 50% without actually utilizing pausing. What do I mean by pausing? It actually comes into play with this bad luck aura right here. Now, first line, for each hit on the combo meter, the opponent's defensive ability accuracy actually reduces 2% or double against a science champion. What that means is it just ramps up faster when you're fighting against a science champion, but eventually both just reach 60% as a maximum from the combo meter. So if you're thinking about that sabotage debuff, it's 40%, and then here's the remaining 60%. So if you have both up, you have 100% defensive ability accuracy reduction. Now why that matters is because when the sabotage debuff is placed on the opponent, you get a burst of direct damage anytime an ability fails to trigger due to that reduction. On top of that, if you're looking at the second line of this bad luck aura, anytime that ability fails to trigger as well, you pause the personal passives and debuffs for 1.8 seconds. So you are increasing the uptime and the burst damage and the bleed damage and the cruelties um, anytime you make an ability fail. Now, with the vicious buff up, it's harder to trigger that failure because you only have 60% from the first line of this bad luck aura, but with the sabotage up, you have 100% chance. So every time you hit them, it fails if they have a defensive uh, ability that would, would trigger. So Rolk's being used a lot and anything in LOL evades or has a chance to evade. And just like with Domino, just because I didn't make you fail an evade, there was a chance that the evade didn't happen and therefore there is damage for that chance it didn't happen. So every hit at 100% is causing that hit, that burst of direct damage. And this is where you can play her a little bit more aggressively to get a longer uptime and to get more damage out of um, the duration of both the Vicious Passive and the Sabotage debuff. All right, so we're gonna play these clips differently than we did the first. We're going to be a bit more aggressive in retaliating and intercepting um, while these beneficial effects are running after Special 2. Now I use Thing for the Sabotage here so that you can see without any extra red numbers, the burst damage while sabotage is up and we're preventing 
um, the abilities from triggering. Also, we're taking a look at his furies and if any rock stacks show up. And since it's 100% defensive ability accuracy reduction, we should see neither happen. Um, so no rock stacks and bleed not feeding the fury by removing the rock stacks, just zero rock stacks. Now in this set of charges in AOL, once we run out of these 40, his ability accuracy reduction can't be modified. So we will see those rock stacks, this, that, and the other. So this clip is only going to run until this sabotage debuff disappears, which is going to be in this set of uh, hits for AOL. But this is just to demonstrate um, the ability of the direct damage and the defensive ab ability accuracy reduction. And our aggressive play to keep it paused so that we can utilize this constant uptime instead of it just falling off from casual play. Not that there's anything wrong with casual play, it's just we're not getting the most out of it. Now we're going to take a look at the Vicious buff on us. And now the difference here with the Vicious buff is that the Vicious buff isn't reducing any more ability accuracy. So we just have the combo meter at the 60%. So sometimes you'll see the red numbers, sometimes you won't. Sometimes this Vicious buff and the Cruelty passives will pause, sometimes they won't. It's a lot harder and this clip is a lot shorter than the Thing um, clip to keep these up because we're not having that failure to trigger um, for abilities here. And even though we're not having a failure here, you're going to run into matchups where you just want the bleed. And then in this clip, I'm aggressively playing Black Cat while the Sabotage debuff is up, and I used Rolk because he bleeds and because this fight has a defensive ability to shut down. So we're getting that burst of damage with every hit due to the 100% damage reduction from both her combo and the sabotage debuff. So here it's a lot easier to keep that sabotage debuff up almost the entire fight because we're, with every hit we're pausing it. So as long as Rolk is playing ball and being aggressive, we can keep pretty much 100% uptime of this sabotage debuff. And that comboed with the bleeds gives you a great damage output over time. Now it's not to say that every scenario that you use Black Cat needs to be a scenario like this. It just means that in these fights is where she really shines and dominates. As you saw with the other clips, you don't need this perfect scenario. You could just use her for the vicious buff passive or you could use her for the sabotage debuff and shutting down defensive ability. Um, but this here, this is probably where your most satisfying play with her is going to come. And then her SIG ability is really just a safety net for aggressive play. You have a combo shield in case you fail and you end up getting hit, so you don't lose that combo meter number. And then if the SIG is high enough, you'll actually evade, but the evade will still eat one of the combo shield passives. So nine of them through an entire quest. So as you take hits, you lose it. And then her special one can be utilized to shrug debuffs. If there are any, if not, there's a cleanse that shows up and it increases the heist timer so that you have time to build back up to special two if you had to get rid of any pesky debuffs before getting there. And then some points that I didn't mention about Special 2 in the clips earlier. Her critical rating goes up um, for each hit on both champion's combo meters, and then she places critical bleeds with Special 2 instead of just regular bleeds. Um, and then looking at Special 3, there's an Infuriate debuff, which reduces offensive ability accuracy by 60%. So not easily available as Hercules is, but still that's something to be noted for fights like Spider-Man 2099 in AQ, where this offensive ability accuracy can both shut down Mercy or Ruptures. Um, so something to keep in mind, maybe if you're not having to strictly stick to the special two just to end a fight. But that was Black Cat. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hit subscribe, like, follow, and share, and I will catch you guys at the next one.